Well, it's a beautiful uh, spring afternoon. I thought I'd do a little uh, a video to uh, talk about boat covers. Um, so I have a, a number of small boats. Most of them live year-round on a trailer, like this uh, Drascom lugger uh, named Tika that spends most of her life sitting on this trailer in my driveway. And of course, uh, uh, it's convenient to leave all your gear aboard, including your sails and so on and so forth, so that she's ready to, to just hitch up to uh, to a vehicle and, and off to your favorite sailing site. So you want to have a decent cover to keep the weather and the sun out, to maintain the lifespan of your sails and all of your equipment, and of course even the road dust when you're traveling down the highway. And uh, my wife has a Sailrite sewing machine. She's very handy with it, and so I thought I'd explain a little bit about our boat covers and our approach to making covers. So you can use a variety of different types of fabrics, I guess from Sunbrella to uh, any of a number of, of commercial products that are designed for uh, boat covers. Um, this particular boat cover here, we uh, it, it's, it's marketed as a winter boat cover. It's basically a, a polyester impregnated with polyurethane. Uh, for uh, water resistance and uh, it also I guess has uh, some kind of UV resistance pretty heavy-duty fabric So what uh, we do is is there's a number of features I guess I should point out here is uh, first and foremost uh, you may notice that the, the cover is on fairly tight it's actually drum tight and is peaked so we have the mast here on supports uh, propped up to kind of create a ridge and this is very important so that when the boat's sitting here or even on the highway water doesn't form puddle if you uh, don't have uh, some kind of a peak uh, going on there you'll you'll tend to have um, the weight of the water will will tend to form puddles no matter how tight you've got the thing stretched from gunnel to gunnel uh, so we tend to uh, favor using the mast as a convenient uh, ridge pole which then of course gets put into good service when you're actually out sailing. So our approach is um, involves basically I try to be uh, as unobtrusive as possible with my attachment points. So what we do is is we use these uh, these snaps. The male and the female part is of course um, built into the, uh, the the cover itself. The cover tends to be uh, you have to pay attention of course to all of the friction points and all of the stress points. So obviously where you put these snaps in is going to be a stress point. So this is doubled over and in addition my wife sews, uh, she has this material, I can't remember what it's called, but it, it's sold on a roll. It's a little bit thicker, more plasticized type fabric which she stitches on for extra strength so that when you've got tension on this um, snap it's not going to tear uh, a hole through. Now um, we found that uh, by placing these males under the gunnel they, they tend to be, I mean, you, they, they, you can sort of see them, but, but really if you're not looking for them, you, they're, they're hardly noticeable. They can be a bit of a, a, bit of a job to, uh, to snap on. Some of them, especially as you make progress, when you start snapping on your cover, say you start at the forward end and you go towards aft, it gets tighter and tighter. Um, but the, uh, so it can be a little bit tough on the fingers, but it's doable. And the advantage is that if you, if you really, really, um, have your specs tight, uh, you're, you're going to have a nice tight um, cover, which I think is key to maintaining longevity on the highway. Think about, you know, 60 mile an hour winds, uh, rattling a loose cover, you'll tear it to tatters in no time at all. Uh, I've gone from Ottawa to Nova Scotia with this rig and I've never had a single issue. We also uh, use this kind of... Um, uh, strapping material. Now this is actually seat belt fabric that a student of mine gave me. Humongous roll years ago. I think one of his parents worked in a, a company that made these and they had a, a big big rolls of this uh, but you could use any uh, any you know kind of strapping type material. And this is stitched on and what this does is it helps uh, when you're driving down the highway it also helps to stabilize and it prevents the thing from ballooning up because the wind always kind of manages to find its way under the cover. We always put in a shock cord seam which really helps prevent this from curling up and maintain a little bit of tightness but it's not sufficient to hold it down at highway speed so hence the snaps. Um, in order to strap this down, what I'll do is I'll just basically, I have this little shock cord with a hook and we just kind of bring it around onto the trailer like this and that's, you know, pretty good. It helps prevent parachuting while we go along. 
Uh, these are not all fastened down because I'm actually doing some work on the boat. And again, aft, we've got snaps. Uh, we've got the bungee cord all throughout. Here's the ends of the cords, big ugly knot. <laughs> that's for expediency. But that's basically the boat cover. Now, right now it's, it's ballooning a little bit because I, my snaps are not all completely slapped down. And of course you can never get anything you know, super drum tight but this is as reasonable as it gets. Let's go around the back and I'll show you some other boat covers because there are some differences depending on your boat, uh, you know, its configuration and whatnot. So back here we have my Poo Duck skiff. Uh, this one, the fabric actually is from an old um, hardware store boat cover that we had bought uh, and my wife modified it. You know, you buy these highway, these, sorry, these, these uh, boat covers um, generic boat covers and basically they're loosey-goosey and you'll use these straps to try to strap them down to whatever attachment point you can find on your trailer but they tend to be very loose and floppy and they don't last at all so my wife essentially recut this and did the same thing that i described for the other boat reinforced the hem we do the same approach of using snaps and really they're not that obnoxious when you look at them um, it, 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 and it's, it's really, um, you know, practicality wins over aesthetics, but not too much of an aesthetics hit here. And again, we have these, these, uh, straps that prevent the flip flapping of, of the cover as you go down the highway. And, uh, it's, it's kind of fitted similarly front and aft. In this case, we opted to use one of these doohickeys to just kind of wrap it around the, uh, the rudder, um, uh, gudgeon or pintle, I guess you would call this, um, so that it helps kind of keep the whole thing tensioned down tight. And again, you can see it's pretty tight. We use the mast as the uh, as a ridge pole. And of course, for uh, supporting the mast, any number of solutions work. I guess you could have a vertical, uh, you know, piece of wood uh, with a suitable notch and a bit of protection against friction. Uh, to not rub off the varnish off your mast or damage the boat. In this case, I've let these into the mast partner and aft I've made, uh, well, why don't I show you? All right, so here we go. So here what I do is, uh, let me show you the forward support. So you just see the mast there. And, uh, okay, so now the cover's off. Let me show you the forward support. So all it is, it's a piece of an old spar. I've put a little bit of a, a little bit of a crotch and lined it with leather so that there's no chafe. And this is just set in the, in the mass partner. And um, this is only here. We're just coming out of winter storage. This is only here for winter storage to give extra support for the mast. Um, but we don't need that for summer season. After here, I had to come up with a bit of a. A clever solution. So I already had this. Um, I don't know if I can get this off very easily. I already had this uh, this little hatch or port that goes into this sealed buoyancy chamber. And all this is is again a. It's a. It's actually a, a closet rod, again with a, a, a crotch to support the end of the mast. And then aft, there's a. I've actually. I don't know if you can see that here, but I've made a little mortise step inside. And this disc kind of just helps fill the space in this uh, in this port, and I just have to kind of find where this meets with the mortise, and that keeps everything there settled in place, and we can go down the highway quite happily. So that's the poo duck skiff, and then the last one is my shellback dinghy. This one here we have a, a slightly different solution. We this was one of my earliest configurations before using a mast as a ridge pole. Um, we instead went with the, uh, the approach of using bows. So I'll show you these. Again, snaps, always with the snaps. In this case, we don't have the, um, the, the, the webbing straps to stabilize things because this, is, this boat doesn't travel on the, on the highway. It just sits on this dolly and it's dry sailed at our club and it's, it's towed behind them, our, our Alberg 30, as a to be used as a dinghy. But these are basically the bows. Oh, let me just... We've got two, and, and it's, it does an okay job. You can see here you put, you know, leather patches to reinforce wherever there's going to be chafe points like this kind of thing, or even if there's oarlocks uh, that are exposed. But these are bows, and uh, they do the job 
they keep the, uh, the 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 cover kind of bowed up so that the water will will have a better chance of flowing off. We've never had a problem with it, and um, yeah, it works perfectly fine. It keeps the boat perfectly dry. You can have your your sail in there, as you can see here, and not worry about the UV damaging it. So it's a it's a pretty good solution. And uh, anyway, uh, that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. Thought some people would be interested in options for boat covers for sm small sailboats. But the key points to remember is they really do need to be tight. They cannot be loose or they won't keep the water out. They'll tear to shreds and, um, you know, they, they just won't be effective. So that's it. Hope uh, this was helpful.